Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Welcome back to this, your Two White Muslims program. Um, before the break, well, before the break, we were talking about children. We've talked at length over previous weeks about how important children are. And we're now just considering kind of the, the rights, the specific rights that children have within Islam. We know as parents, we get loads of rights. But what about our children? What rights are incumbent upon us when it comes to our children? And just before the break, well, just before the break, we were talking about names. And that actually, within Islam, children have the right to have a great name. And then over the break, Yusuf and I were chatting about how not all parents seem to get that message no, they somehow. Don't. It's extraordinary. <laughs> um, and we were saying, you know, you, you do hear stories. Certainly, I mean, in our culture, it's easier to, to talk about these things. But um, uh, uh, I, I genuinely once worked with somebody who was called Teresa Green. Now, all you have to do is say that out loud as, a, as a parent. Trees are green. Trees are green, yeah. are they? And the sky is blue. Really? You know I mean? Come on, really? come on, parents. I encountered somebody called Annette Curtin. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. Yes. Say it. Annette Curtin. Oh, my stop, goodness. Stop, stop it. My goodness. You can't name your child like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Ridiculous. And then I do, I do recall. I do, oh, no, you had one, didn't you? Megan Bacon. Yes. Now, the, the surname Bacon is very common. It's yes, common in, it in, 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 in yes. English society. Yes. But if you put Megan in front of it, what does that make? Uh, bacon and egg. Really, yeah. isn't it? It's now Megan Bacon. Megan Bacon. Egg and bacon. Oh, which on many levels we find terrible. It's wrong. Yeah, on many levels. <laughs> yeah, it's um, wrong. And then I do remember hearing about two brothers who were called Robert and Benjamin Down. Now, within the UK society, Robert is shortened to Bob. And Benjamin is shortened to Ben. So it's Bob down and Ben down. Yes. <laughs> Again, How say ridiculous. Them out loud. Say them out say loud. Say it out loud. Say Just them out loud. Just imagine what that child is going to live with yes. for the rest of its the rest life. Of... And then you hear the horror stories of people <laughs> trying to name their children after an entire football team. Or um, Yusuf and I did a story not so long ago about somebody who was trying to name their child Adolf. Oh, no, there's there's connotations to, oh my goodness. So your child, your children deserve an amazing name. I think every single time you say that name, it has an impact on that child. So they need a good one. They need a good one. What they also need and have a right to is maintenance. Maintenance. Every child, every child has the right to be fed, to be clothed, has the right, child, uh, has the right to be educated, protected until they reach adulthood. Protection means protection against moral and physical harm. So it means sustenance, it means food, it means providing uh, an income, whether you know you find yourself in the household of that child or not. Our responsibility as parents is to ensure that child has the support, the economic and spiritual and moral support that they deserve. SubhanAllah, our children have a right to a basic education. Mm. So religious, moral education and secular uh, mm -hmm. education. It's the right of Muslim children to be Islamically educated. So when the beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, is seeking knowledge, uh, said he, he said seeking knowledge is compulsory on every Muslim. And what he meant by that was Islamic knowledge, mm. not secular knowledge, he said Islamic knowledge. So gaining other knowledge is beneficial and necessary, but Islamic knowledge is the most important. And it, it should begin from the early stages and should be the foundation on which the child's life in general is, is actually built on. A firm foundation of Islamic knowledge. And we've, we've spoken at length about this previously, that Islamic knowledge absolutely is crucial and as, and as parents we need to put that knowledge across but actually the seeking of knowledge is incredibly important you know islamic scholars uh, throughout the ages have led the world in new innovations bringing new practices to being because of this desire this command by our beloved prophet peace be upon him to seek and acquire knowledge alhamdulillah Every child also has the right, though, to be brought up according to Islam, according to Islam and Islamic practices. 
teaching children Islamic manners and etiquettes in accordance with the beautiful example of our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, is very important and every effort should be made to ensure they're taught in following the Sunnah from a very, very early age. Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, narrated, the beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, kissed Hassan, his grandson. And then a companion named Al-Akra ibn Habis, he said, I have ten children and I've never kissed any of them. And our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He who does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. Hmm. And this is recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. Hmm. Now the word mercy here, hmm. we've spoken about this before, yeah. and the word mercy has been chosen so specifically by Allah yeah. in this instance. Mercy is an incredibly important concept mm. and concept within uh, within Islam. Yeah, because think about it, think about what the word mercy actually means. Mm. Yeah. Where does mercy fit in when it comes to our children? Yeah, because the temptation is to think mercy is just letting people off from someone, forgiving people. Actually you, the word is much bigger than that in its general sense. It's much, much bigger than that. It's love. Absolutely. It's, it's affection. Love. It's unconditional. Yeah. It's unconditional giving. Yeah. And mm. I've heard, I've heard uh, it, it described as uh, a mother feeding a child mm. is a mercy to that child. Yeah. Think but about that. And My it's goodness. like, uh, I've, I've heard it said that Allah's mercy on us is like the mercy shown between a mother mm. feeding her child. Mm. SubhanAllah. So it's an incredibly important concept is the word mercy. Mm. And here is our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, he who does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. Mm. Uh, again, recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. SubhanAllah. We've yes. got to be really careful here. So true. Also, another thing that's important is respect. Now, I once remember hearing that in order to gain respect, you must first give it. Yes. You must give respect in order to... You've got to give to get. You've got to yes. give respect in order to get respect. Um, the respect that parents impart to their children, well, that will help them become respectable, responsible, kind, friendly, obedient, patient, humble and honourable children. And let's be honest, a great human being for their entire life. Insha'Allah. The uh, guiding of children should be done in a loving way uh, and uh, in as loving a way as possible. Mm -hmm. Quality time, personal attention should be given to them. Lines of communication should be developed with them. Not just a brief passing time, but real time so as to ensure an effective and a healthy parent-child relationship. When dealing with children, one should know what to focus on and what to avoid, i.e. avoid being harsh with them. Hmm. Be soft, be kind, be approachable and approach them uh, uh, with, uh, with, with a, a genuine love and care and, hmm. and uh, devotion to them. So soft and kind approaches should be adopted when dealing with the children, even in situations where they maybe fall short. Uh, rather than using harsh words to them, it's important to develop a strong bond with children, literally, from as early as possible. Mm. That way, they'll always listen to what it is that you have to say. Yes, yeah, it's so true. And I, of I often think that um, when it comes to the parent, Allah helps out. Because I remember when my first child was born, it was like Allah flicked a switch in my heart and, and it was... It was immediate and, and unconditional. And the same with my second child and with my third child. It's amazing. The children just expect it in return and they learn it over time. We get it from day one. So we've got to give it to our children to then get it back. And so it's the right of the children to be loved, which begins at the very earliest age when a mother feeds that infant child. My goodness. The mother is required to keep the child close to her and maintain physical contact and studies have been done about this how important physical contact is for children at early ages but actually throughout all of, uh, of the life as they're growing up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribes two years for breastfeeding where possible 
uh, we actually have a call waiting who hopefully is going to help us with this topic as well. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you today? Alhamdulillah. Oh, very good How are you? How are you? I'm getting much better, much better, much better. The issue is, the issue is, <coughs> Asians are mostly, it's okay for you two gentlemen, because you've lived in this country, you've been educated. You two gentlemen are educated in this country. Uh, obviously, you've been to the school system. We as parents, well, I'm of 52, as I spoke to you last Our mothers and fathers and all our Asian community who are in their 60s and 70s are mainly uneducated. We are uneducated as we came in the 70s, and they did not have the tenacity or the um, educational system to teach us. While our parents were going to work for 12 hours a day, and our mothers were you know, at home cooking and slaving for the kids, we could not respond, they could not respond to our needs. So our parents don't even know us, and we don't even know our parents. And this is a fantastic point. And again, we've mentioned this previously. Uh, first of all, Sheikh, thank you for, very much indeed for that call. It's so true. We've spoken at length. I, I, I love when this, this gentleman calls yes, in. Yes, yeah. Because the honest, honesty yes. shouts incredible. at you. Yes, absolutely. It really does, subhanAllah. And, you know, what we've an spoken at length person. about the debt of gratitude that we have to that generation yes. that came over here and worked unbelievably hard, first of all, to raise their own children, but to create... Um, a, a society in which I can walk pretty much anywhere an in this great British... An infrastructure. Yeah. I can walk anywhere and I'll find a mosque and I can, I can read my prayers with other like-minded Muslims. I can buy halal meat. I can go to bookshops. I can meet with Muslims in social uh, 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 places because of the hard work of these people, because they brought and created an infrastructure that we benefit from today. Part of the sacrifice they gave up there was time with their children. Absolutely. Yes. No two ways about it. The thing that we can do going forward is to recognise that and think, well, OK, what can we do then? What can well, we now do now for that our the, children? Now that the infrastructure is there mm. and we have everything in place to be able to practice this deen in this country, mm. unabated and, and with some ease, it has to be said, mm. and we have the madrasa systems and we have the, all the education systems, mm -hmm. we have the secular schools and we have, you know, we have everything that we, we need to give to our children to enable them to be educated, mm. but be educated on two levels. Number one, educated in their deen and number two educated in uh, within the secular society for the work that they'll need to do to uh, survive and bring up their own families in this dunya mm. subhanallah my, uh, my my father-in-law who was an an amazing individual came to this country uh, in the in the late 60s um and you know he 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 the one thing he said to all of his children was education education I might not have it, but I want you to have it. It's the one thing people cannot take away. So we give to our children even that which we didn't have. Alhamdulillah. Do you know we have another call waiting? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, hello there. Uh, I've been listening to your conversation. I think we just like we went uh, over that last week as well. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, you know, um, Junaid and Yusuf. Knowledge that comes, it doesn't come easy. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, especially, you know, every single thing that's happening on the planet Earth today was prophesied 1,400 years ago. Yeah. yeah. And this is where our Islam, if you look at, uh, and I'll be honest with you, I've read the scriptures, the other scriptures, the, um, you know, the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you know, if you look at it and if you analyze that and you look at the, you know, it's a continuation. We are respectful of the old scriptures. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing we never forget. You know, Jesus of Nazareth was our prophet as well. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the great things about Jesus of Nazareth <coughs> is that he, his uh, 
do you know, one of the famous things he um, done was where he goes into a temple. This is in uh, Matthew, chapter Matthew of the Bible. Mm-hmm. He goes into the temple and he overturns the tables of the moneylenders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those that sold the doves. And the thing is there, Jesus of Nazareth at the end says, Thou have made the house of my Lord into a den of thieves. Mm-hmm. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh my goodness. Uh, w- once again, love it when this gentleman calls mm-hmm. his sage like yeah. uh, advice and, and, uh, and comments. Alhamdulillah. Mm. Thank you for your call once again. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and it's worth bearing in mind <clears throat> we're saying knowledge, especially Islamic knowledge, is so important to impart to our children. And for no other reason than what we tend to find is Islamic knowledge has been picked up in the past by uh, communities all over the earth and is even being brought back into play today. As an example, we were talking just before the calls about about breastfeeding and how within Islam, um, Islam recommends that the child should be breastfed for two years, which isn't necessarily the case in Western society, except for now. Because interestingly, interestingly, the Western world strayed away from this trait of of breastfeeding for up to two years. But guess what? They're now coming back. It's back. They're coming back. They're returning to encouraging breastfeeding Um, to the point where it's almost forced on women in hospitals in this country now. This Islamic trait, this Islamic principle, this guidance, alhamdulillah, it's incredible. And even today, in, in, in what we would consider to be, you know, 20, 20, 2021, 2021, we're still coming back to these Islamic principles. Scientifically, it's proven that the first five years are the most crucial years in forming the future personality of any child. Most of the problems of teenagers come from their early period of childhood. childhood. Therefore, children need to be loved from the very early years of their childhood to have stable lives ahead. Oh my goodness. We have some amazing responsibilities, really. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And if you actually start numbering these responsibilities, Mm. you quickly run out of paper. Yes, (laughs) yes, yes. Writing a list, you quickly run out of space. Mm. SubhanAllah. So as parents, what can we do? What can we do? Well, uh, what we can do is we can try and learn some positive parenting mm. skills. Yep. Uh, so as parents, we, we need to apply positive parenting skills. Uh, and if we're struggling with our child's challenging behaviour, then we need to seek some help. Mm. You know, it's, <laughs> how hard is that? There are people out there that have struggled just as much, or in fact more than mm. you, and they have some answers. They can give you guidance, they can give you help. Mm-hmm. So seek help. Undertake a parenting skills course. Find out how our beloved prophet, peace be upon him, dealt with children. Make dua, because if you want help mm. bringing up your child, there is one helper above all helpers, and the only one that can give help and guidance when it's needed, and that is Allah. You ask for Allah's help. Be the prime example and the role model for your child, and a role model that your child will want to follow. Mm. This means you should be the righteous, you should be the practicing, you should be the one who imparts the the, uh, knowledge and also the example Mm. to your children of practicing Islam, insha'Allah. There's an incredibly powerful um, saying within, uh, within the UK culture, but actually I think this is global, which is you are a product of the people you hang around with. In other words, the groups of friends, the groups of acquaintances that you have around you will radically affect the person you are. Wow, this is recognized within Islam. It's so important as parents to know who your children are keeping company with and what kind of friends they have because friends are such an incredible influence on our children. The beloved prophet, peace be upon him, said, Man is inclined to get influenced by his friends' manners, so one must be careful in choosing friends. 
This is uh, relayed by Abu Dawood uh, and Tirmidhi. And my goodness, I know we've mentioned this before, uh, but uh, in the past, sort of pre-Islam, I did loads of reading, reading and reading about business strategy, about success in life, about how to have a successful life and reading and reading and getting knowledge from hundreds and hundreds of volumes and books and CDs and DV video tapes. This is how long ago <laughs> this was, my goodness. And so many times, so many times, I now find myself from an Islamic perspective hearing what our beloved Prophet peace be upon him has said and thinking, but I, I read that in such and such a book, yeah. I heard that on such and such a CD, I saw that on that DVD. These guys who are preaching success, who are preaching how to live a, a wonderful and successful life, are preaching Islam. They're just preaching Islam. This is not new, but we have to remind ourselves. My Absolutely. Goodness. You know, the prophetic uh, example, mm. and th this uh, specifically has been narrated by uh, Ali, radiallahu anhu. Mm -hmm. uh, he mentioned that there are three <coughs> stages of a child's development mm. and parents should uh, treat and deal with them according to these three stages. So first of all the child is the master for seven years. <laughs> In other words what the child wants the child gets. Yes. And it's, <laughs> there's no two ways about it otherwise the child will screen the house down yep. until it gets exactly what it needs. So the to, child... To the point where you recognise the screen you go oh that one Wants feeding. That one wants feed. Oh, that needs a change. A <laughs> <laughs> that a little bit tired, idea. this one. It's true. Wow. Oh, this one just needs a cuddle. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, so amazing. The child is the master for seven years yeah. uh, and, uh, and a slave for seven more years. Wow. And then an advisor for seven years. Mm. So a master, it controls what it needs and mm. wants. A slave, it's learning. Yeah. It is it trying to, to take in and understand the things around it. Mm. It is learning. So a parent needs to be an educator at that stage. Mm. So in the first stage where the, the child is the master, the parent has to be the provider. For the second stage where the child is seen as a slave, the parent has to be a teacher. Mm. And then the child is an advisor. Mm. So really he needs to, to grow in uh, an environment of, of love mm. and, and truth and care and compassion. And uh, if he does that and, uh, and attains the age of 21, mm -hmm. at that stage, th between the ages of 15 and 21, mm -hmm. you have to be the child's friend. And if you do that and become and continue to be the child's friend mm -hmm. for the rest of its life, then alhamdulillah, you have done your job. If you don't do these things, or if you just leave them alone, mm. then really, what have you done? What have you done for that child? And most importantly, what have you done to the amana that you were given by Allah mm. to look after his creation, this child? SubhanAllah, you need to really think about this yeah. and be very, very careful, inshallah. Yeah. So if we consider then, and we mentioned last week as well that between the ages of seven, uh, naught to seven, seven to 14, 14 to 21, we have responsibilities as adults, as parents. And then beyond this age of 21, well, actually, you know, the parent's responsibility changes. And as you rightly say, Yusuf, it's about being a friend. It's about becoming a friend, being a friend and staying a friend throughout the rest of the life, I would, I would say. Um, that said, up to that age 21, we do still need to manage children's behaviour. We do. Yes, and there's do. certain things that we can do, but there's also certain things that we should avoid at all costs. And the following simply should never be permitted as a means of managing any child's behaviour. OK, number one, please don't uh, give out physical punishment, please. And nor the threat of physical punishment. Mm -hmm. This is destructive. Yeah. And number two, we shouldn't refuse to speak to a child or interact with <laughs> a child. Can you imagine? I'm not talking to you. Well, but I, I know people I know, that do it. I know. I and know, and I they, know. they think that if I, if I take my love away, if I take my love away, they'll know not to do this again. Wow. Actually, what they know is that for this moment in time, mummy or daddy doesn't love doesn't me. Doesn't like me. Absolutely. Oh. SubhanAllah. Being deprived of food, mm. can you imagine? Yeah. Or water, access to toilets or to other essential facilities? Mm. SubhanAllah, they should never be subjected to verbal intimidation, nope. ridicule or nope. humiliation. You know, th this list actually goes on and on. Yeah. And I think, Junaid, that we mm. ought to continue this subject 
in our next show this time next week yeah. inshallah inshallah so for for the time being it uh, just remains for us to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh